name is Brittany. Thanks for joining on to my channel. Um, tonight we are going to do a white glitter pen with the cow print. Um, I may do a black cow print and a black and brown mixed cow print pen. Um, they're really basic and pretty easy to make. Um, let's see. So first off, I've got some pens over here that I've already kind of prepped some. Um, this is a Ink Joy, or the, let's see, Paper Mate Ink Joy gel pens. And what I did is I just broke off the tip here. I used an X Acto knife and just shaved those down some. Most of the time when I'm doing epoxy pens, uh, depending on the style that I'm doing, I do a thin layer to cover up. If y'all can see these, there's like a little dark spot here. They are, let's see, there we go. Some of the, the little details on the pen there. And I apologize, my hands, I've been painting all day and I did not even use gloves when I went to spray paint these. They're not 100% dry, but I'm gonna let these dry for a few days anyway before I ever epoxy, so they should have plenty of time to dry out between the heat and the uh, dehumidifier running. So on this one, what I do is uh, most of the time I mix a Mod Podge, and you can, I guess, pretty much use any kind. I use a Mod Podge matte finish. I mix that. I have these medicine cups that I use, and I put a little bit of tacky glue. Sometimes the Mod Podge to me is just a little bit too runny. And so I put a tacky glue in there and just mix that up really well. And I do this mainly when I do glitters. Uh, and I add a drop of acrylic paint. Tonight I just added a drop of Apple Barrel White acrylic paint. Uh, I've used, you know, pink eraser on, depending on what I'm doing. I just add one drop, mix it in. And instead of spray painting, I don't, obviously, I... I don't use pink spray paint a lot, so why buy a whole can when I can just kind of make my own? And this has worked pretty well with what I use. So what I do is I just mix that really well, get me a clean brush, this is one I just use, and I just add that on. And so it does help cover up any imperfections because this pen was not completely covered. But when I glitter pens, it also takes away from those little dots on here from these, which is what I want. So anytime that you are doing a project, make sure you have all of your items that you are gonna use on hand. Go ahead and prep your area, clean surfaces, paints, glues, paint brushes, paper towels, water, you know, any Thing that you are going to need and see like right there can y'all see that lip a little bit I didn't get that trimmed off really well but that glitter is going to help kind of camouflage that in and I just use a very light hand because this method depending on the color you may have to add two layers of glitter but because for this project because I'm using a white glitter I am not too worried about it because I'm going to be adding inks to it so it will hide. So make sure you get all of it covered really well because you don't want any bald spots of it not sticking. And I do have some paint down inside and that is okay because once I get finished before I ever finish a pen with the top coat, you can always take a Q-tip, dip it in acetone and just rub it around there real quick and it will take any paint from inside of your pen out. So, this is covered really well with our mixture, which is hard to see because we are using a white base. Uh, I use a cardstock piece just to kind of help catch any of my glitter here. And I'm actually going to be using, let's see, Hacked Glitter. This is a fine cut. The color is Ice. It is from the Glitter Guy, which is where I am using the silicone pad here. The pink pad which is underneath and then we're just gonna sprinkle like crazy 
Most of the time, I'd mix my own colors. I actually use just a clear glitter, or I'm sorry, not clear, but white glitter from Walmart. And when I use that, I have mica powders that I add. I also, depending on what I'm doing, I just use colors from the Walmart section. They're fairly cheap, and they're really the only glitter that I have close to me without having to be shipped. So I do like that idea. I mix them. I actually have a whole little section here in my craft room of glitters that are sitting in medicine cups because I use, I just use them and mix them, and if I have any le left over, I leave them to the side. So I can use them if I ever need them again for future projects. All right. So I'm going to let this dry for a few minutes. I do have a little heater. You may hear that in the background, and I do apologize. Try to clean off some of this glitter. And I made that other one beforehand. Kind of got a little outside of the container top there. Just tap that down. And like I said, what I'll do is once this is dry, or once I finish with the, the style that I want, I will let this dry for a few days uh, just to make sure that that base coat is dry and make sure that we don't have any other imperfections. Here, I'm actually going to go ahead and prep this pen. I was going to do a wood grain on this, but when I spray painted a while ago, uh, I, I was unprepared when I did it, so that was my fault, and this pen did not turn out good when I spray painted. Because I only have two hands, and I had three pens with me. But it was also really cold outside, because we were expecting snow here in Kentucky. So let's just cover this really well here. And then, like I said, this will help take away some of those imperfections and from those details on the base pen. And so, like I said earlier, um, I usually do epoxy if I'm doing a certain Depending on the design, I will put a, a thin layer of epoxy down, but I'm not doing that with this tonight because I'm going to do glitter first and the glitter will hide any of the imperfections that we may have. So we're going to go through here, make sure we've got it all covered there. I'm pretty sure it looks good because that white will help cover any imperfections that we may have. All right, let me put this in my water here. All right, let's glitter this one. That way it can be drying while I work. And sometimes with my pens, I do, I do add different colors. I'll add some colors to the top or to the bottom. With glitters, I do a base color with the mixture of the acrylic paint and the Mod Podge. And I just brush that on with a paintbrush. Let's see, this is covering it all really nicely. And sometimes you may have to do, again, with light colors, you may have to do a second coat. But because I did that first coat of the spray paint, I don't believe I'll have to, even though it did go on not so well for me. All right. Also, you may be thinking, what would you use for your pins since I'm sitting here uh, putting them to the side? I actually have, because I, like I said, I don't have a lot of hobby shops around or crafting shops around. My closest one is an hour away. So it's hard for me to uh, justify going to those crafting stores when I don't do this full time and when I have, I really don't go to those locations. 
Um, so I try to do what I can and I have to improvise. So I just use stuff from Walmart and get what I can locally. All right, so we're going to use, this is pitch black uh, alcohol ink. Go. And then I'm gonna be using, these are the Holtz alcohol brand. Uh, this is Espresso. Okay, so when I do cow prints, I do these on tumblers and you just randomly place these. So these haven't been, these are not completely dry. Like I said, I'm gonna let them sit. And you just randomly, and you have to watch it because this alcohol ink will just come out like crazy. And look, it just disperses all on its own. See that? And sometimes I do kind of like try to shake throughout and it gives like smaller things, even though I am getting it everywhere underneath, it looks like. <laughs> And you just kind of let it do its thing. I'm going to turn that up and see if it'll run a little bit. And you can add names to these. You know, however, for your customers, themes. I do where I've done like pink up here. I may have one sitting right here actually. Let's see. I know I have one. Yeah, there's one. This is what I've done. This has a uh, matte top with bright tone matte. So I did this one, this is just a brown. And then I, I just brushed the pink on and gave it just random spacing out there. And then I took a gold ink pen, or the gold paint pens and just went over that. Those are really cute. I've gotta clean the inside because it's not clean. But then I can always add names or however somebody may want. And you may have to kind of tilt these down just because they are just wild when it comes to the ink coming out. And it does get messy. Cause see, it's already black all the way and it wasn't like that. But you just gotta work with it. And then you can just slightly place cause see it is some on the outside and I don't want a whole big spot right there. And with these, you can add all kinds of stuff. I'm actually probably gonna do some sunflowers on this one. And I'll do those as water slides. Once I get this epoxy, I'll let it dry for a few days again. And then once I get a good epoxy layer on there where it's smooth, and then I'll go back and I will add the um, water slides for those. You have to be really careful because, like I said, this is not dry. I'm going to go ahead and just cover that before I spill it. I think it looks pretty cool. Actually, I kind of want to do like a big blotchy patch somewhere. Let's do one All right here. And see, they all kind of have a mind of their own, and you can just drag that lightly and take it around however you'd like and it hopefully y'all can see with that light shining on it even though I'm putting black on there it is still pulling the glitter you still have that shimmer so you don't have to worry about any of that all right so I'm gonna set this in the holder and like I said the holder I use uh, just random things I can find locally and I'm actually using a green <laughs> lumbar roll from the dollar store and I think it was like six dollars and it was plenty big that I could cut it in half I made sure I have it I have them for my turner scrape those off here and I have those for my turner cut out in the middle and then I cut them for I just like shove the pencils through there and it kind of cut a track out and then I just use them as my pen holder. So I have one that I put for my turner and then I have one that I use as a holder for pens when I'm doing projects like these. All right, so this espresso color is actually new. I don't, I've never used this. This is probably gonna be really dark. Let me see what I have. I usually use that. 
I have a little jar here. It's not the best way, but so I use a lot of ginger. Then I also use this mineral pearl. It's really pretty. That's usually that was what was on that other pin. But you do have to be careful. Uh, sealing these is tricky because they will bleed. That ink will bleed when you go to seal it with rustoleum. So I don't know if I just didn't wait long enough or what the deal was, but it did not go as planned and I had to redo an entire tumbler. I was ready to cry. So this one, let's use the espresso. See how dark that is. Oh, that's really dark. So it's almost kind of black. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to do this. Oh, goodness. And we will go in with this ginger. Well, I said so. There we go. Let's kind of go in beside See, I'm just lightly kind of brushing it because this one is pretty much, this is on the lower end of almost empty. And so, see, it actually just spread through that and it kind of pulled it so you can see. So, I have like a blanket upstairs that's a brown and black cow print and that's kind of what it does. It has the darker sitting with the brown. So, it has black in with it so let's just let's just pull this around so that's different I was I've never used the espresso so that's a first time trying that out but you can see hopefully you can see the difference it is a little bit darker and it is lighter and you can slightly see the brown tint to it, but it is really dark. So I may not use that as cow print in the future. But for this one, we're just going to continue on. And I'll see if I can do some little splatters any kind of way. Maybe not. And so see where it kind of ran down that little tip right there? I can use that as making small little spots. These are just fun. You can just, they're all different. I mean, cow spots are all unique. You can just take them around however. Make them one of a kind. See, there we go. That one's pretty cool. I don't really know what I'm going to put on this one. But as you see, it still pulls that glitter shimmer through that. Very pretty. This is the first time I've actually used this ice color from the glitter guy. I believe it's a... Um, one you can use as what they call a cheek glitter and you can just sprinkle it over a color so I'm actually going to show you this hopefully this is a tumbler I have drying that maybe you can see I actually added it to the yellow I just used Mod Podge and as you see it just pulled right through and it still has shimmer but it pulled you can still see all the colors underneath so I really like that this is a fabric Tumblr. I actually just Mod Podge the fabric on there and then did the little flowers. So it's kind of a, it's got the different colors throughout. But yeah, so I used that ice color on there and these are all new. So I, that was fun to, to mess with. Now I'm going to do this mineral because I use this. This is a pearl. They're iridescent. They're kind of tricky with some projects that I've done. We're gonna, I'm gonna show you how it looks. 
since we have an extra pin. I love using this with a black. It's all dried. Okay. Now, as you see, it does have the shimmer. Get all that. It's got all a bunch of dried out parts on it. Clean that off. Okay. Now, hopefully, y'all can see that. And it adds a really pretty shimmer to whatever your project you're working on is. Pretty cool, huh? And it is different. So let's let's compare. There is a slight difference. Kind of hard to see on camera though. But I love using the the mineral on projects. So as that's drying, see that's the one we just did. It's not too bad. May add some more espresso in with that. At ginger but I will do this this one I'm gonna use and do a black and white and just randomly place your spots just have fun with it make it unique you know add a few little spots there There we go. Oh, I didn't want that big spot, but that's okay. So as you see, we just randomly kind of placed it throughout. Let's do kind of like a big, a big spot there. There we go. Y'all see that? Then we're going to go back and we're going to add black. So the black, I am going to add kind of its own little spots, and then I will add it in with the... Okay, so let's see here. And see, it just spreads and does its own thing. I love it. Love it, love it, love it. These are my favorites. I love doing the black and whites. Or, the, I'm sorry, the brown and blacks. With the glitter. They just look fabulous. Let's see about adding bigger spot right there oh and then it just spreads just has fun add some little single spots by itself I'm trying to think of how my blanket kind of looks up there because it's got black throughout it hmm I don't know what I want to put on this one all right, so like I said, I'm gonna let these dry for a couple days just because I do have other projects going on. Let's go back and look at these. So this one was the first one. This is the black and white cow print. Very pretty, and you still see lots of shimmer in there. Beautimus, beautimus. This was the brown and white with the espresso and ginger alcohol inks. And this one was the alcohol pearl ink mineral and then the pitch black alcohol ink. And so like I said, these are super fun to work with. They just are all truly unique. I kinda wanna add a little bit of espresso into this. Let's play with it kind of curious of what I want to put on these. Y'all send me some ideas. Leave me some comments. I don't know what I want to put on them. Alright. So like I said, I'm just going to let these dry and then I will put a layer of epoxy because this glitter is not very chunky at all. It's a fine glitter. And so it shouldn't take a lot to make that a smooth a very smooth surface for me to add water slides or a name in vinyl. It should be pretty easy. So yeah, 
So hopefully this helps with anybody trying to figure out if they want to do cow prints or how to do cow prints. Uh, sometimes, like I said, with sealing, I did have an issue when I sealed a tumbler. My inks bled and it scared me to death. If you've done one of these and you have another way of sealing, please share. I would love to know how you sealed it um, or if you even did seal it. So. I guess you don't have to if you let it dry long enough. Some people don't seal their alcohol inks anyway. So maybe that's what I'm going to try on one of these. I'm not going to seal it at all and see how it does. Now I do know I have to be careful. I will give this pointer. When I have done these, this I've used this mineral alcohol pearl on my tumblers. See how the difference is when it's drying? There is a difference. It kind of gives it a, I don't know how to explain it. It's kind of a lighter color too, but anyhow, when I go to do that, it's like the pearl iridescent, whether it's micas or whatever they use to make that pearl. If I go to use, say, Mod Podge and go to put that, that coat on there just to seal that glitter or to help those inks so they don't spread, I've actually had it to where it seems like it turns my, it spreads that pearl or whatever through my glitter or through my epoxy. It's kind of changed the color. I didn't, I didn't like it. I was unhappy with it. That was only on one. So I don't know if it was just kind of a freak accident type thing or what it was with it. But now what I've done is I've actually just gone through and taken a paintbrush and Mod Podge and just added the Mod Podge to each of the coloring spots of the alcohol ink. Yes, it's a little time consuming, but you know, maybe it'll save me from having to do other projects. So far, I've had no complaints out of any of the ones when I've sealed it with Mod Podge. Like I said, it only happened on one tumbler and it ended up being the tumbler that I kept for myself, which was kind of crazy. But anyway, I hope you'll have a good rest of the night. Have a safe weekend. And if you'll have any questions, please feel free to ask. And hopefully I can help y'all. Thanks.